Pharrell Williams, Missy Elliott, Cliff, Pusha T, all of you guys are Virginia. I mean, did you realize, like, when you're going through what you're going through, you look back, say, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, did you realize you guys will be, now, Pharrell Williams, we know what he is in the music, super producer also, now he's the creative director of at uh, Louis Vuitton. Did you guys, did you know that you guys will be what you became? I knew Pharrell would have been great. Okay. I knew Missy was great. I knew we had something special. Right. I knew all of us had something special. I didn't know it would go to this point. Okay. I just know that New York was like the bubbling state and we wanted to be heard from Virginia. Okay. And people, people was like, yo, that Timberland sound. I didn't know I was creating the sound. We didn't know we was creating the sound. Right. Pharrell didn't know he was creating the sound. We were just like-minded people just doing great music. And Teddy got a hold of Pharrell first. So right. And Teddy, Teddy said, So Pharrell was the first one to really venture off and really understood the studio in that real limelight. And then it was me and Missy and Pharrell kept telling like Teddy, like, yo, it's this other group, it's this other guy named Timberland and Missy Elliott that you need to hear. And I guess Missy came up to the studio with Teddy, so she heard, you know, and Teddy was doing this thing when Michael Jackson Pharrell was helping out. But we all kind of knew that we was destined to be something. We just didn't know what it was. And the thing about it, we didn't think like that. A lot of people today, uh, get caught up into the money, to the, right. all this stuff. We didn't think like that. It was the getting better to be proven, right. to say we made it. We got to put us at the table. Give right. us a seat at the table. Because, you know, New York had it popping, Kid Capri, all right. this. And no music come out of, out of Virginia. So our, our purpose was give us a seat at the table. Right. We deserve that. We deserve to be heard. It wasn't about making a lot of money. It wasn't about we just know that we had something special. Right and it needed to be heard, and we stuck to it. We ended like, we made ways out of no ways. You know what I'm saying? We right. rode in one car, six people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To go to a studio session, everybody chipping for gas money, and it was the love of the music that, that kept us that kept us going to know that right. we didn't have no money. Right. Music made us feel rich. So you wanted to put, you wanted Virginia to be on the map for music. You got have great athletes. You got Allen Iverson, Bruce yes. Smith, I mean, uh, Michael Vick. Uh, uh, Sweet Pea Whitaker. Mm -hmm. So you had the, the, the some some pantheon iconic athletes, and they're like, "But we ain't got no music. Let's put Virginia on the map for music." Yeah, and 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 I guess Pharrell was the first one to kind of bust down the door. Then right. then came Missy, and Missy came with like uh, that Gina Thompson. Right. He 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 how? Then everybody like, who is this girl? Right. And then from there came she she put me on, so I was a part of her, and then. When we left Jodeci, we was with Jodeci at right. one time, mm -hmm. and then we left Jodeci, and we had this song called Sugar and Spice, Me and Missy. Right. And that song got to Craig Coleman, which got to Aaliyah. Right. And Aaliyah said, I don't like the words, I don't like the song Sugar and Spice, but I want to work with the people who did that. I want to work with the guy who did the beat and whoever wrote the song. And from that point on, Virginia Sound was on the map. How did you and Missy get started? Were you friends before she heard your beats? Did you guys go to school? Did you go to rival schools? How did Missy and Timberland come to be? Missy and Timberland came to be because uh, a friend of mine named, um, I think Melvin Newer, which was Magoo. That's Magoo. Okay. Magoo Newer. Magoo is from Portsmouth. Melvin knew Missy, and then this guy named E was working with Missy, mm -hmm. was working with the group. Missy was in a group called Phase E. Okay. They the first one to put out a record from Virginia, so they was like the top notch. Okay. So the Missy and E connected, say, yo, you need to meet this guy named Timberland. And he connected us and came to my mom's house when I stayed in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. Missy, I had a, I had was doing just beats like for the play, right. the mix with. Right. But Missy heard the beats and like, no, nah, I'm about to sing over this. And I, that was the first time I got introduced to okay. Singing over hip hop beats okay. was through Missy. Right, I didn't know nothing about it. I'm like, you about to do what? Uh, what? Mm -hmm. And she put them harmonies. My life changed. Right. I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I want to do for right. the rest of my life. And then it's like, she just kept like giving me the encouragement, like how dope you was. Because then I just stopped. I kind of stopped DJing. And I start focusing on beats. Right. So I was like, because she introduced me to melodies, harmonies. You can write songs. You don't have to just rap on these beats. Right. I'm going to write songs. And I was sampling old Patrice Russian and making them like dope break beats. Right. And she's like, uh-uh, we about to make this a song. And then she started singing and writing. I was like, it was the first, it was, it was like 
what I was doing elevated to the next level. Right. And she gave you confidence that you could do something more than DJ. She gave you confidence more than you can just produce beats. Because a lot of times someone of Missy, she's like, well, let me go get a more famous producer. Mm -hmm. She took the local kid from Virginia and says, nah, we gonna do this together. I'm leaving and I'm taking you with me. That's exactly how it happened. Devonte, they met, they met Jodeci at uh, a concert. They met him backstage. Devonte said, y'all wanna fly y'all out to Jersey. And then Missy said, well, can we fly my producer that I got back home? And that was me. Right. But you were the producer. She said she yeah. got a producer. Yeah. So she didn't go to Devontae. She said, I got my own. We right. got our own. So that's how it was. How much pressure is that? Because that's Missy. She said, and they said, well, we got this producer for you. She said, nah, but I got my producer back home. So now this is your opportunity. You know, in, in the uh, Eminem song, you get one shot. Uh -huh. To seize this moment. Mm -hmm. So now that's a lot of pressure. It was, but I wasn't scared of it because <laughs> we had a sound. Right. And Devontae liked them for my sound. Right. And so by him being as great as he is, he knew he came in the game with a sound with his group. Right. So I thank God that he was like, yo, all right, he can come up right. because I want to meet that guy who's doing that. And so it kind of worked because I learned from him. He learned from me. I was, I, we both was young, but I was like a teenager when he was in his 20s. So he was doing his style and I was learning from him because he was, take, he took harmonies and vocals and taught me and Missy how to really like, really expand it. And then my beats was like different for him. So he was like, okay, I'm good at slow song, tempo good at up tempos and me. Right. So it was a perfect marriage, you know what I'm saying? You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we do something before two something.